Greetings everyone, right now it's equalizing time. All right, very warm welcome for this video for Girls Act. We're gonna look at EQing in three parts. First part is going to be with the Parametric EQ2 in FL Studio. Second part is going to be with the Ozone Equalizer and it's gonna be a bit uh, more advanced EQing techniques. And finally, we're gonna take a look at the plugin which is called Slick EQ by TDR. It's a different EQ, a different kind of uh, EQing uh, style and purpose. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be three interesting videos. Hopefully you can learn a thing or two about EQing and step up your game. Diving into the parametric EQ. Uh, actually, I need, just need to show you what we're going to be working with. Um, you know, I use my own material just because it's, it's, more, it's much more simple for me to access uh, it. And I actually chosen a very, very a problematic uh, track EQing wise. Uh, so uh, when I was working on, I was like, mm, that for the EQing tutorial would be a perfect track because there's a there's stuff to work with. Uh, so I uh, there's the drums, uh, the kick bass, and the arp acid. What we're going to focus on is the arp acid, uh, but I still brought the uh, there's other stuff, but I didn't include it. But I bought I brought the uh, kick bass, so we can have something to correlate the EQ. Uh, EQing with and drums too, so we can just have a feeling of it. And this is uh, how it sounds. And the, the guy, it's, it's this guy that we're going to. Be. All right, so that's what we're working with. Quick overview of the Parametric EQ2 in FL Studio. Everyone has it. That's just that's that's native plugin of FL Studio. And if you're not on FL Studio, this is still relevant uh, because uh, eh, there is a Parametric EQ in every digital audio workstation ever. That's that's kind of a basic plugin to have. Um, and some some are truly quite good. The Logic One has a linear phase uh, option, which is really cool. But that's for another discussion. So parametric EQ, you have, you have seven uh, articulation, seven bands, seven points uh, that correlates uh, to these here. You can move them here. Um, and each of these bands can be in uh, either disabled, which they are disabled, low pass, band pass, high pass, band stop, low shelf, peaking, and high shelf. We're not going to use all of them for the tutorial. I'm going to use certain ones, but I'm going to show you how to use in powerful ways. Now we have that beautiful EQ, where do we start? Very first thing you want to put in priority in every case you are EQing, it's you're not boosting, you want to clean and cut. You want to remove stuff to make more space. That's the very first stage you want to start with, all right? So if, if you don't know where to start, that's where you start. So in our case, uh, you start with the low shelf, that's not what you want because the low shelf, if you see, doesn't actually cut, it just lowers the volume. Uh, we want to set up a, you want to go type, you want high pass, and that is, yeah, you, you want something like this. And you can choose, you know, different order, uh, that's mostly the, you know, the, the curve, how much it's going to uh, be steep or not. Um, in this case, actually, I, I start with a steep eight because I, I want I want something uh, steep, all right. Um, and the checkpoint frequency here is two hundred hertz. For the synths, for um, mostly all elements that are not a bass, um, it's the checkpoint. It's not the you know uh, don't do it every time at, and stay at two hundred hertz. What you you want to do is start at two hundred hertz. That's a legit cut because you're cleaning all that space here. But you want to actually um, put your synth element and feel like it's you're just sitting them on the base. Okay, you don't want any uh, missing space because if you cut too much, uh, you're gonna make your synth sound like they are too thin, not mm, warm enough because there's some there's some warming elements in that comes in the low frequency. You know. Feels, feels a little more thick, more um, interesting. So yeah, first checkpoint, you start at 200 Hz and then you just 
navigate and balance balance things up. Let's do that. In that case, there's already some cut that have been made, but I still hear a difference. And you you can never uh, cut too much. I mean, sometimes there's some artifacts left. So with this value in this situation, I don't feel like I'm removing too much of this sin. So uh, always uh, don't always work in solo. All right. Uh, first thing I, I check in solo, and after that, you want to EQ in context. So let's uh, validate. <laughs> You see, that would be too much. So that would be the very, very basic cut for sense. The second cleaning move you want to do is to look for some undesired tones in the, your, the sense or whatever element you work with. Uh, it could be resonant peaks, just uh, too much of a present that brings stuff you don't like. Stuff you don't like, all right? Um, could be a lot of things. To do that, there's something you can do in the parametric EQ, and it is to go there, uh, select the bandpass. Don't worry, it's not your old value. Let's say that the one still has its value, but you momentarily want that to uh, search for problematic frequencies. Don't worry, it's not going to be a problem for your settings. If you see that the one here uh, still has its setting, this is temporarily, and this uh, will allow me to look for uh, the problematic frequencies. Yeah, there's a bit of uh, boxiness, muddiness uh, here. So what I do is uh, just going to go back to a peaking and this is the, the spot, uh, the problematic spot, and I want to just lower things up by, a, uh, you see the value here, and if you look in the top left corner here, uh, we are by not much, 3db is okay, you, you don't want to end up uh, being like this, not for, not for that situation, but just removing a bit of these unde undesired frequencies. Let's continue searching. If you roll your mouse, you can make it thinner and the thinner it is, the, the easier it is to spot those frequencies. Yeah, I don't know if you, you hear this, some hmm, hmm. Ha, ha. <laughs> that's that's the best I can do here. Uh, I don't I don't want that. Once you spotted your pro problematic frequency, you can just go here and lower the volume. Usually, if you cut, you want some narrow cuts, and if you push, we'll do that later. Boost, you work with more wider uh, boost. That would be it for the cleaning for that example. Now, what I want to do is step out of solo, validate with the all mix, and after that, we're gonna do comparison, EQ'd and not EQ'd. Makes sense to me. And now, let's do a comparison. It's a bit cleaner and by doing that, it's much easier to make it fit in the mix afterwards. Now let's do the drums and review the process at the same time. So uh, yeah, let's start with the low cut. Yeah, that, that's safe. Uh, let's try to spot something problematic. So, I'll pass.
feeling like a bit of, you know, those those frequency bring some thing, some kind of harshness uh, in the uh, drum group. So I want to take some of that off. Yeah. Just, just sounds more flat now in context. That's a subtle change, but that's what differentiates a, a good amateur track from a professional track. All right, so in, in mi mi the mixing process is mostly subtle changes plus subtle changes plus subtle changes. And in the end, when you bypass the chain, it's just two worlds. So this is it for part one. I showed you how to clean your mix with the parametric EQ1. We didn't do boost yet. We're gonna look at that in uh, part two and part three. But remember that the best boost you could do is cleaning up your mix. So I'll see you in part two. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe for more videos from myself and other Ghost Act producers. Go check out the Ghost Act page and website for amazing sample banks. I will see you in part two and have fun EQing those frequencies.